one of the only ways that people knew about scripture was it was acted out for them because the the uh, services were in Latin and so uh, most of the people didn't understand that and there were no you know you couldn't go to your local Bible bookstore and get a Bible it just wasn't available and so the best way to pe teach people scripture was through these plays Welcome to Profiles with George Flores on Star 99.1, a weekly discussion between pastors and local Christian leaders that are making a difference in the tri-state area. Now, here's your host, George Flores. And good morning. I am George Flores. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Got something special coming our way next Saturday. It's a one-man theatrical presentation that is going to amaze you. We're going to talk about it right now with the actor in question, a man who's been performing for the Lord in many ways, Rich Swingle, who joins us by phone. Hello. Good morning, Rich. Good morning, George. It's a joy to have you and to talk with you again. I know we've talked years ago in yes. another radio interview. How are you doing? Very well. Keeping very busy. Yeah. I gather that looking at uh, at your site, um, hint, hint, www.richdrama.com, and seeing some of the things that you're doing uh, and have done and, and some of the reactions that people have had to your one-man drama presentations. Let's just start right off the top, Rich. You're a Christian. Yes. Okay. A Christian drama arts, performing arts, uh, don't they sort of, aren't they a juxtaposition of incongruities? <laughs> they can be. The arts can be used in ways that... Uh, kind of turn people away from God, but they can also be used in ways that uh, draw people and woo people to the Lord. So you found, of course, that to be the case with yourself, where you're using the arts to, to let folks know about Jesus. Absolutely. Well, why did that happen? How did that happen? Give us a little history about Rich Swingle. Well, I uh, came to New York in 1993, December of 93, and uh, I came to get a master's in theater. I was going to go back and teach theater arts. I didn't even have a career in mind, except in the back of my mind, in my heart. I wanted to, to make a career as an actor, but wasn't really focusing on that because I didn't really think it was too much of a, a possibility until it started happening. And I went on a lot of auditions in the city, was in a lot of short, you know, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, rather, uh, showcase pieces, uh, that sort of thing. But, you know, I, I started to put together some one-person plays. I had seen a fellow do that at my college, uh, Kurt Kloninger, and I was blown away by it and inspired to do it. Another guy that inspired me early on was Roger Nelson. He does The Man from Aldersgate on John Wesley and has added uh, a piece on, on St. Patrick. And he and I just in 06 ended up performing off broadway together he did his play and i did mine and uh so that was a real uh, full circle of of uh inspiration to to performance so. now rich where do you find the material does, does it have to be customized by you uh, do you let's let's start there how do you de determine which plays to do and and do you do your own, own writing Yes, all of the one-man plays that I've written are my own, with the exception of a few short pieces that have been written by friends. But the majority of them I've done, and uh, and I get the ideas from a lot of different sources. My church, Westchester Chapel, has actually commissioned me to write uh, two of the pieces on the Book of Acts, and uh, before that, the Revelation. And Others biblically inspired are my Christmas play called Views of the Manger and the first piece that I ever put together called Big Fish, Little Worm, which I still perform a lot, and it's uh, the stories of Jonah, Gideon, Jeremiah, and Lazarus. The other plays are based on um, historical people in church history like John Woolman, who spoke out against slavery a hundred years before the Civil War. I think that might have been the piece that you came to see way back when. At the Lambs Theater. Yes. Which I'm sorry to say is not in existence anymore. How sad. But It is sad. I walk past it every day. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, theater is alive and well, and thank God it's in the hands of believers like yourself. Mm -hmm. So now, but there are a lot of folks who look at theater as just a, a bunch of church skits. Mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, if you're a Christian and you're using the drama, well, it's probably a church skit or you're doing the, uh, you know, the bathrobes and the towels for a headdress Christmas pageant. Sure, sure. And there's a place for all of that. But we do we do sketch work at our church, and we I've seen great growth over the years. And in fact, uh, at two recent events, we had a, a friend of mine come who's 
won an Oscar, and he he spoke very highly of uh, of both pieces. So you know, we're we're really kind of ratcheting that up in in terms of the expectations and the training and the uh, the work that we put into the pieces. So, what would you suggest for those who love the arts, who love drama, and who would like to use it in the service of the Lord? Mm. How how do they make their craft better? Where do they learn? How do they study? What would you suggest? Well, a great place to start is Christians in Theater Arts. Uh, their website is cita.org, C-I-T-A dot O-R-G. They're a networking organization, and they have national and, and regional and local uh, gatherings, and a lot of training goes on there. I direct a theater program in the summer called the Masterworks Festival. I'm, I'm really excited about that. We just got Bev Holloway, who was the casting director for uh, The Ultimate Gift most recently, and she's done 30 films, 10 of which are still in production right now. And she's coming out to see our, our final performance, so that's very exciting. And John Kirby is directing us. He uh, was the acting coach for Jim Caviezel on all of his films, except The Passion of the Christ, when he was working on Peter Pan in Australia, and he got radically saved out there. So uh, that's been really cool to have him on board. This will be his third year there. Uh, Patricia Macherry is going to be on our faculty. She's a uh, principal on One Life to Live. Um, Susan Somerville-Brown was in Cats on Broadway and has performed in a number of shows in the Chicago area. And uh, uh, Acts of Renewal, uh, Jim Shores and Carol er uh Carol Anderson, they're a husband and wife team that do uh, work. They've opened for Brennan Manning and um, uh, Tony Campolo and a whole host of people. And so I'm, I'm really pleased to get them out as well. Harvey Johnson, who was our first director at, uh, of a, our first full-length play at Masterworks, he's coming back. And so uh, just a, it looks to be a really great summer. Well, this is, this is all good. I'm interested in your comment about about the arts. You know of uh, Lauren Cunningham, the founder and president of Youth with a Mission. Yeah. He he'd written a, a while back about the arts, mm. and um, just a simple quote, and I wanted you to elaborate on it. He okay. was he said that you know any territory that we abandon, Satan will fill. Absolutely. And that that had happened in the performing arts. That um, actually uh, theater, the church created morality plays to, to teach the truths of scripture to illustrate uh, certain points. W what what do you feel about all of that? Oh, oh no, there's no doubt. I, I did my one of my master's uh, papers on the cycle plays in York. They were they were basically the only one of the only ways that people knew about scripture was it was acted out for them because the the uh, services were in Latin, and so uh, most of the people didn't understand that. And there were no you know you couldn't go to your local Bible bookstore and get a Bible. It just wasn't available. And so the best way to pe teach people scripture was through these plays. And over time, I think, uh, you know, the church saw theater being used in ways that, like we said earlier, kind of pushed people away from God and um, toward, you know, uh, hedonism or, or whatever, ha whatever you like. Uh, but, yeah, I think, we, I think that there is a resurgence, a recognition in Christian circles that it is one of the most powerful forms of communication. I, I, I'm sorry I don't know the names, but I, I heard a politician tell a, a filmmaker, you've got a lot more power than I do. And it's really true. Uh, media has the power to shape culture. It's, uh, you know, we're, it, when we're born, we're in, in a lot of ways a blank slate, and it's our, it's our training that makes us who we are, and part of that training is the media that we take in. So for us to leave that to people that don't honor the Lord is, I think, a huge mistake. We're talking with Rich Swingle, who is a performer, an, ar an artist, an actor. And that's that's perfectly legitimate to say, and he loves the Lord. So uh, you just need to know we're, we're talking with him uh, because he's coming to do a performance this coming Saturday at the Westchester Chapel Community Church in White Plains, and it's called Beyond the Chariots. And it's, uh, the I guess, the second half of the story that, of Eric Little, a uh, good listener, you probably saw the famous, uh, wow, award-winning film, uh, Chariots of Fire, talking about a, a runner who, who wouldn't race on Sunday because of his convictions and his faith and, and what happened. But this is the second part of the story. Rich Swingle, why don't you elaborate on this? 